They are native homelands on the western Uganda, southern parts of South Sudan, DRC, Congo. They are war torn countries. So these guerrilla fighters realized that you know, they could kill these animals and get a lot of money from them. By 2008 9, the northern white rhino was extinct in the wild. We were at the time talking to a zoo in the Czech Republic called the Verkralovi. They had the last sort of remaining potentially reproductively active northern whites left on the planet. Now, they hadn't been particularly successful at breeding them in zoo conditions, which is pretty typical for rhinos. So we hatched a plan with them to bring the last four most reproductive animals to Old Pejita in the hope that the kind of natural environment would lead to mating behavior and eventual mating and production of calves. When they came here, they adapted pretty well. They acclimatized so quickly and they became natural rhinos. <laughs> Ile kitu ilikuwa inapewa ni apples, mukate, iliabidi nikatie grass hii na panga kasiwekea. Nilikuwa nafunza hawa kidogo kidogo paka wakasoya. Nikaanza kufungulia kwa maboma. Sababu kazi ya northern ni ngumu. Unakaa 24 hours ukiangalia. Northern white rhino. They die between average of 34 years to 38. Sudan is 43 years old and Nanjin is 27 years, then Fatu is 16 years. It would be sad imagining that they will be extinct one day. But one day I won't be seeing Sudan. One day you'll be gone and the other females will be gone. It will be so sad. If Sudan dies, it will be very sad to me. It's everything to me. Sudan has been isolated so far from having interaction with other rhinos. We can't bring them together with the females because there's a lot of aggression. We can bring them together with males because they will fight over territories. So Sudan has been living a very lonely life. But the presence of Ringo has made him like uh, feel uh, he's now more comfortable. We found him early one morning on a ticket and he couldn't follow the mother around, so the mother had abandoned him. We tried to play the role of the mother, that is make sure that we feed Ringo. We feed Ringo with milk, porridge, that is white oats, glucose, syrups and bicarbonates. We mix together. We also make sure that every environment is all it takes to be a natural rhino. That is, he sleeps well, he wallows on the mud. When we put Sudan with Ringo together, Sudan is so happy. It's like an old man having a small baby around him. And it's why Sudan is looking more younger than before. Because he's having another animal to make him happy. now know that the two females can't get pregnant. So we're going to be looking at what are referred to as artificial reproductive techniques. That could be a variety of different methods that could be employed to create purebred northern white rhino calves, potentially through in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer, or crossbred northern white, southern white animals, which would preserve some of the genetic makeup of the northern white. And there are people who are prepared to fund it, but the criticism is that the money used for that would be much better used for in situ conservation at scale of rhino populations on places like Old Pejita. So is it really worth saving the northern white rhino? My answer to that is yes, because if we ever want to see rhinos reintroduced back into Central Africa, the genetic makeup of northern white rhinos, which confers upon them the ability to live in that environment, will have to be preserved. <laughs> At least you can see there's a hope for these species. And that is why I ask everyone to join hands in helping us bring these species again to regeneration and to a steady population.